water. Resilient infrastructure looks like community benefits. It looks like communities envisioning projects from the beginning and planning for the next seven generations, if not more. There was an intentional, um, you know, kind of uh, discriminatory, racist kind of history where we were, uh, you know, redlined, they call it, into, into these pockets of like these toxic hotspots. So the multi-benefit approach is how we're approaching water. Parks serve uh, as that entry point for us to say, we want to renovate this park and through the contracts that we're getting, uh, we want more shade, we want stormwater capture elements built in into the parks, pathways, uh, like trails, uh, new uh, like playgrounds, right? Um, areas for exercise, cultural elements, like all these beautiful, wonderful things that we need at each of our parks, right? You know, imagine uh, one of the largest freeways just coming through your backyard practically, right? How do we put walls trees, and then a set of infrastructure next to it that not only mitigates uh, the, 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 the question of pollution, but it also provides shade, so it's reducing that heat island effect, right? How do we provide um, access to a space that allows for us to exercise, right? Um, so we could be healthy, so we could you know, um, like really take care of our, our minds, our bodies, and our spirits, right? My vision is to have community members at the seat from the very beginning, and also have water connected to other climate issues, including air quality, transportation, energy, and even health. I think that we need to approach these solutions with the future generations in mind, but also holistically and connecting everything that makes our environment whole. Tell me what you gonna do when the water keeps rising.